Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee if thou hearken shall hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God the Lord shall set thee above all nations of the earth the subject this morning is existence at the top existence at the top our objective is one understanding what it means to exist at the top we shall be understanding what it means to exist at the top place of life number two we shall be understanding the purpose of existence at the top what does it mean to exist at the top and what is the purpose the scriptures made it abundantly clear that the top is the place for God's people, the very top. That is, God has no other place in mind for his people except the very top. In excellence in authority he has no other place except the very top in excellence in authority and in various realms and endeavors of life the question is what does it mean to exist at the top? Number one. It means to be outstanding and exceptional in one's field of endeavor or assignment. You are outstanding you are exceptional in your field of endeavor, in your assignment. That is, you stand out in what you do. In Genesis chapter 39 and in chapter 41 and in verse 39 to verse 40. We saw a man like that whose name was Joseph. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet, none so wise as you are. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to your word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. That is, you are outstanding. You are exceptional. In your endeavor, in your assignment. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 18, we saw a man like that, also his name, David. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite that is cunning in plain and a mighty valiant man. A man of war and prudent in matters. A comely person. 
and the Lord is with him. This is the place for God's people. That is in your field of endeavor, in construction, when people see your structures, they stand out. In architecture, when they see your handwork, it stands out. In music, it stands out. In interior designs, it stands out. In graphics, it stands out. In the practice of medicine, it is absolutely outstanding. You are the outstanding neurosurgeon, the outstanding cardiothoracic surgeon. That is the place God has for his people. And I speak to someone here today. You shall stand out after this moment that amen can be better that amen can be better if you are saying amen say it louder amen what does it mean to exist at the top number two it means Existing as a leader in your field of endeavor. Right, let rephrase it another way. Existing as a leader who influences multitudes positively in your field of endeavor or assignment. Existing as a leader who influences multitudes positively in your field of endeavor or assignment. You influence multitudes positively. That is, in your field, in your area of expertise, when the leaders of that field, when they call the leaders in the field, they call you. Those who shape policies, who form policies, those whose opinion matter in that field, they call you. In Judges chapter 7 and in verse 17, Gideon was speaking to them and to his people and he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall you do when i come to the outside of the camp it shall be that as i do so shall you do i am in front i am a leader my assignment is to influence you positively very very important in your field of endeavor first samuel chapter 18 and in verse 7 that was what happened in the life of david in israel and the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul had slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Saul had slain his thousands. That is, nobody can ignore the influence and the impact of David. Listen to this. In your field, you are the reference that the younger ones want to attain to I want to be a neurosurgeon like Dr. Benjamin Carson I want to be a property developer like so and so you are a leader at the front and that is what God has made the church to be in all fields of human endeavor in science Michael Faraday Isaac Newton in medicine engineering right at the forefront that is what God has made the church to be in the days of Abraham he was the leader in agriculture Abraham set up the ranching system in the days of Isaac irrigation farming 
in the days of Jacob, the technology of genetic engineering started, I believe, with him. They were all the leaders in the field. In commerce and production, the days of Job, he was right in front. He was the greatest of the men of the East. That is the plan and the purpose of God for his people. I want every trace of mediocrity to die from your head. I want every trace of inferior existence to die from your head. I want every, every, every stamp of low self-esteem to die out of your head. I prophesy to someone here today in the name of Jesus, the place God has for you at the top, you shall take that place. If you are saying amen, you will shout it like a believer. Lift your right hand say in the name of Jesus. God has a place for me at the top and I am taking my place. Say it louder. God has a place for me at the top and I am taking my place. And no devil can stop me from taking my place. You believe that shout the loudest. Amen. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. I have two more that I may, I may refer to, but because of time, I will step into that in the second service. But now, we have just seen just two things, what it means to exist at the top. Now, what is the purpose of existence at the top? Why does God want me to be at the top? Is this so that I can brag and show what I can become or anything? I'll give you three reasons. Three reasons why God wants us at the top. Number one, to represent God, the purpose of existence at the top, number one, to represent God or to represent the authority and the excellence of our God to our generation. God wants us to be up so we can represent the authority and the excellence of our God to our generation. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to verse 27, the Bible said, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Let's make people to look like us so they can dominate like we dominate. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He created them so they can dwell and exist at the top. In Psalm 8 and in verse 3, all the way to verse 9, Psalm 8, verse 3, When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower, than the angels, that's than Elohim, that's the Hebrew word there, and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Somebody say amen. People can't see God, but they can see you. When they see you, they are meant to be reminded of how God looks like. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? In dignity, in authority, in excellence, in performance, in influence, in realm of oppression, they are meant to be reminded of how God looks like. You are the visible representative of the invisible God. Did you hear what I just said? You are designed to be the visible representative of the invisible God. The, repre the physical 
personality of the invisible personality they can't see. There is something about you that will make them know how your father looks like. Many, many years ago, we traveled to Benway State. This would be like 15 or 20 years ago. My little baby was a baby growing up and down. And, and one of my friends, we grew up together, a classmate. He looked at me and said, oh, this is, he called my local name. This baby running up and down, this is Idoko Sono, his child. I said, yes, he's my son. He's my daughter. <laughs> this baby running up and down. Now, he didn't even know. He just saw semblance. Something in the baby just reminded him of his age mates appearance and look somebody said to me many years ago you preach like your father i said ah, does my father preach he said you didn't know 1947 to the 50s he used to do morning cry in the village i went and asked my father at home do you preach he said, Haba, we are the one who have original fire. <laughs> you see, you can preach on empty stomach for seven days. No food in those days in the village. I didn't know. I wasn't there. But something inside me reminded somebody of a preaching. He said, my father preached on Christmas Eve. Was it the year of 1947? From night till morning in the village. I was telling me. That is how it is in the realm of the spirit. Something about you should remind people of your God. God is up. You are not meant to be down. Hey! He is the most high. You are not permitted to be the most low. He is on the top of his game. You are not permitted to be under in your game. Am I speaking to somebody here? Stand up on your feet and say, I am stepping up. I am standing out. I am the son. All right, I am the child of my father. I cannot be otherwise. I look like him and when people see me they are reminded of the audacity the authority the excellence of my God you believe that shall the Lord say amen hallelujah they are reminded they are reminded they are reminded of the authority they are reminded of the audacity there is something about you that is not common that is not earthly there is something about you that is celestial there is something about you that is heavenly there is something about you that is superior that they can't trace any trace of inferiority around you at all that is what makes some people angry with us because you have such a god such an audacity such an authority you don't feel inferior you don't you can't be intimidated you can't nobody looks down on you you talk with force and authority so they are wondering who's what kind of person is this if you are moving about apologize you know i'm very very sorry sorry did i offend you just moving like chicken that rain beat just then they will be very happy with you but if you move your chest out. And you say, I can't beg, I can't borrow. What kind of person is this? <laughs> In this economy, who do you think you are? Hey! I see something happening to somebody here. I see, now, but let me warn you ahead of time. On your way up. Be very ready for jealous people. 
envy, jealousy, hatred, bitterness. If you are on the floor, they leave you alone. <laughs> if you are in the pit, you are their friend. If you are not doing anything significant with your life, you are a good person. But if you are ever doing anything significant with your life, enemies will become friends for your sake. <laughs> they will just be united for your sake. But what anointing is doing, annoyance can't stop. seven people tell them your place is at the top 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 <laughs> help me walk to seven other people tell them refuse any other place but the top refuse any other place but the top Refuse any other place but the top. Refuse any other place but the top. Refuse any other place but the top. I announce to you today, I prophesy to you, I decree upon you today, the place that God has given you at the top, you shall occupy that place. No devil shall take you down from there. You believe that shout the loudest, amen. Give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. As you take your seat in the presence of the Lord. God wants us to represent the authority and the excellence of our God to our generation. They look at you, you remind them of what it means to serve God. What it means to live for God. What it means to have the nature of God in your life. What it means to be the offspring of the, of, of the lion of the tribe of Judah. What it means to be the child of the Most High. The all-wise God. The one who owns the silver and the gold. Somebody say a loud amen. Why? What is the purpose of our existence at the top? Number two. To administer. And govern earthly systems and institutions with kingdom principles god wants to take us up so we can administer and govern earthly systems and institutions with kingdom principles to show the world how heaven does things how the king of kings does his things to administer and govern earthly systems and institutions with kingdom principles in so doing we are saturating the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the lord as the waters cover the seas i'm sure you understand what i'm saying when an unbeliever or a sinner is is, is in a place he does the things the way his his, his unbeliever mindset and his and and, and, and the devil his father uh, uh, directs him to do but when a child of god is in a place over a place he will govern that place administer that place according to kingdom principles according to how things are done kingdom principles we saw that in the life of joseph in egypt but look at daniel chapter 3 verse 29 all the way to verse 30 the bible said therefore i make a decree concerning now this is the situation with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego that every people, nation and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego it shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no God other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Daniel chapter 6 
verse 1 to 3. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And then, over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. There was a spirit of excellence. There was a spirit in Daniel that made him to do things differently. To do things kingdom way. To do things kingdom style. And because of that spirit that was in Daniel they set him over the whole realm. Am I communicating at all? So God wants us to teach the world integrity for example in the workplace to teach the world principles of honesty principles of truthfulness principles of of of, of faithfulness productivity you see he wants to teach us promptness of duty and several things that is you are by being over the systems you are preaching the gospel with what you do without saying anything with your mouth Am I communicating at all? To administer and govern the systems of the earth with kingdom principles. We, people will watch you for a while and they say you do things very differently. You, there is a way you do things. You do things very differently. Who are you? Where are you from? Then you'll be able to introduce yourself to them. Who are you? Where are you from? There's a way you look. There's a way you talk. There is a way you move. There is a way you carry out your things. There is even a spirit behind what you do. There is a calmness. There is a climate you carry. And by the time they are able to see that, then the systems can be influenced. Somebody say a loud amen. God is about to give somebody an opportunity that will show the world how to do things. You believe that? Shout the loudest amen. If you are the one that God is about to position, shout the loudest amen. Somebody brought his staff to this, to the church here, and he asked me to pray for them. The staff, um, oil and gas, hospitality, and so on, they are into a couple of things. And after I finished praying for them, he said to me, he said, anybody in this organization who does not know career and workplace wisdom cannot work in our office. The little book that I wrote on career and workplace wisdom. You know what he did? He said, you all, what is wisdom one? They recited it. Wisdom two. They recited it. Wisdom three. Wisdom four. Verbatim. He said they have to recite it every morning. Business move from hundreds of millions to billions. One of our star officers here, a member of the church, an usher here, is a high player in her office. By applying principles of the kingdom in the office. If they want to give an account from a hundred million and above, they look for her. Administer that account for us. He said, by the operation of that wisdom, winning international awards, global. That's what God wants us to do. To show the world how to do it. To administer systems with kingdom principles. There are people seated here today. I announce to you, in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ the resurrected Lord, very, very shortly, you will become the answer to the, to the problems in your organization. The answer to the problems in your community. The answer to the problems in your family. You believe that, shout the Lord and say, Amen. I'll begin to round off and then we can pray. What does, why does God want us to function in excellence? Number three, to literally attract people to our maker by the display of excellence, 
outstanding performance and forefront existence. Again, God wants to attract people, use us to attract people to our maker. To literally attract people to our maker by the display of excellence, outstanding performance, and forefront or frontline existence. That is, you display so much excellence. You are so outstanding in your performance. You are at the forefront in existence. And they know that you are a Christian. You know, everybody is attracted to excellence. Everybody. Everybody is attracted to excellence. And quality carries its own publicity. <laughs> hey! Hey, 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 hey! Ay, 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 ay. In Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 14, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, he said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And then verse 16 said, Let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works. See, they will see. Be outstanding, shine, be a shining star. And that will attract them to your Father which is in heaven. To your Father which is in heaven. Isaiah chapter 61 and in verse 9, Isaiah chapter 61, he said, And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offsprings among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Everyone who see them shall acknowledge them. They shall take notice of them, that these are not a normal people. These are a seed which the Lord has blessed. Excellence is more evangelistic than utterance. There are people who will follow you to church because of how you look. Am I communicating? There are people who will follow you to church because of how you look, because of what you do, because of the results you produce. The results you produce. Who is attracted to mediocrity? Nobody except other mediocres. Who is attracted to average existence? You're always failing in class, always doing the assignment in the office upside down, and then you are giving them a handbill to follow you to church. To follow you to which church so I can become like you? No. But when you are outstanding, one of our classmates in the university in those days is now a big man, director. In one of the, he said, one reason why he read with, 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 with my group, myself and two other brothers who are Christians, one reason why he read with us was that he was sure that if he read with us, he will pass. He had already failed and repeated one class and met us in the class. But he, he, he studied around with us because he said he was sure that if he, now he was telling me with his mouth, if, if I read with you, I know I will pass. And he passed. He had failed before. He, he, he repeated the class. Our final MB, medicine and surgery final. All the questions were reversed. We went into the hall and saw them. Am I communicating at all? That was how it was. That is, without preaching. There are people who are attracted to you without your preaching. That is why you must make up your mind that you will not be a mediocre. Lift up your right hand and say, in the name of Jesus, the top is my place and I must take that place. Say, I must take my place at the top. No devil can stop me. Did somebody receive anything here this morning? If you are the one you received anything here this morning, your amen will be the loudest. This is my conclusion very, very quickly, number one. Conclusion and counsel, number one. Realize that excellence is a department of godliness. When I say excellence, I mean to excel. That is existing in authority. Excellence. 
and that is existence in authority is a department of godliness being at the top godliness means godlikeness like godness being at the top makes you look like god it's a department of godliness to strive to be like god is to exist at the top if you are going to be like your father you are meant to be at the top in every realm of life listen you shall be the head and not the tail above only and never beneath it is unlike god to be the tail and not the head and to be beneath and not above it's unlike god deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2 so it's godliness if you are becoming like god you are to be propelled to the top propelled to the top spiritually financially in your career in every realm number two realize that excellence we are talking about existence in the position of influence or in the position of authority offers you more evangelistic and discipleship opportunity than any other kind of existence excellence existence at the top offers you more evangelistic and discipleship opportunity than any other kind of existence i will talk about this more in the second service that is when you are on top the platform has been given to you to effortlessly, effortlessly evangelize and disciple the people under you the platform is made available for you to effortlessly evangelize look at what job said job the man on top job chapter 29 verse 21 to 23 job 29 he said unto me men gave ear and waited and they kept silence at my counsel who is talking the, the greatest man in the east unto me men gave ear i don't beg them for audience I have excellence and excellence gave me influence and audience. They gave here and waited. They kept silence at my counsel. After my words, they spake not again. My speech dropped upon them, command bomb. And they waited for me, dropped upon them like bomb. And they waited for me as for the rain. And they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. That is, I was such a commander among them. My, 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 my excellence gave me a voice that could not be denied. Am I communicating? You are a driver in the office. You are a supervisor. And your MD CEO. He said, to, coming Sunday, I have Thanksgiving in my, in my church. Would you like to come with me? Is that how he will ask you? Next Sunday I have Thanksgiving in my church and I'm inviting you all to come with me. Full stop. I have another thing to do somewhere. It's okay, go ahead and do it. But it is on record that MD has a program you didn't attend. I may not take it personal with you now, but it's on record. You won't even think of doing any other thing. Oh gosh, should I, how many people should I come with? <laughs> it is easier for the boss to say, my domestic staff, come with me to church. Than for the domestic staff to say, Oga, oh follow me to church. It's easier. God will make you the ogre. And if you're a woman, the ogre madam. Stand up on your feet in a shout of praise.
louder shout of praise. Is there somebody on fire here this morning? Take your seat well. Take your seat again because you didn't stand well. Is there somebody on fire here this morning? Somebody who is about to take your place at the top. And no witch from your family. And no wizard from your family. And no occult power from your family. Will limit where God is taking you. Then stand on your feet. With a shout of victory. Woo! I don't know. I don't know what you feel. But for me. I have rejected. The pit existence. The ground level for life. Forever. I've rejected it forever. There are some letters our people write. At times for one thing or the other. Maybe official things. And I said no don't write the letter like that. This is too beggarly. Change it. No, 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 you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, can't, don't phrase it like this. Or you can't even title it like this. It's too beggarly. Not knowing who you are is not humility. It is stupidity. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is, this is where God placed you and you place yourself down there. It's not Humility. It's not even humility. Hallelujah. Today is something. Now, I am not saying that we should be proud or arrogant. That is another extreme. That is another extreme. Where you can't greet people and can't respect people. That's another extreme. No, 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 no. We are respectful. We are respectful. But there is a we know who we are. Inside that respect, we have dignity. Am I communicating at all? So there is a balance. Right now, you are going to lift up your hands and your voice. First of all, thank God for the word you heard this morning. If you have been blessed and you were touched by that word, lift your voice and thank the Lord. Father, thank you for your word to me today. Are you ready? Lift your voice and thank the Lord. Thank you for your word to me this morning. I give you the praise. I give you the honor. I give you the adoration for your word to me. Lift your voice, Mr. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Adonai. Thank you, Elion, for your word to me today. Ancient of day, Lily of the Valley. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. In Jesus precious name we're going to deal with some forces that prevent people from becoming who God wants them to be Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18 all the way to verse 20 then lifted I up mine eyes and so and behold four horns and I said unto the angel that talked with me what be these and he answered me these are the horns which have scattered Judah and Israel and Jerusalem and the Lord showed me four carpenters then I said what come these to do and he spake saying these are the horns which has scattered Judah so that no man did lift up his head but these are come to free them to cast out the horns of the Gentiles which lifted up the horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. God is saying there are people that no matter what they do they can't lift up their head because there are some forces called the horns of the Gentiles that make them to just go like this permanently. He said but I have some other counter forces called the carpenters. And I 
release these carpenters to scatter the horns so that these people can lift up their head and become who they are meant to be this morning every horn of the gentile fighting your life and, and your destiny from arising in prominence shall be scattered by the carpenters of god lift up your voice and say father, father in the name of jesus, name of jesus I, ask I ask for the release, for the release of the carpenters of god, of god against every horn of, of the gentiles that is risen to scatter my life and bow and bow down my head and my life in the name of jesus oh you carpenters arise and scatter these holes now in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray arise and scatter these holes carpenters of god arise and scatter these horns the horns of the gentiles 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 that do not allow me to lift up my head arise and scatter them arise and scatter them arise and scatter them arise and scatter them let the sepe ready gagala la haza let the sita rena gagadalo zaradaga la gadiga la gadiga la gadiga la gadiga la gadiga la urata sakala gadiga la gadiga la gadiga la reta sakala gadiga la gadiga la gadiga la reta sata lepe reta sita lita paradis zaruta sata lina gagala ha lepe reta sete lina magadira lepe reta sepe reta sidi exiga ito reta sida ite lina maradara ite lepe redia sa ike perete si ike pete lidia ika parata sete lidarana le perete si totele le perete si talina nana yes lord father let this house be scattered let this house be scattered let this house be scattered by the carpenters of god in jesus precious name leviticus chapter 26 and in verse 13 he said i am the lord your god which brought you forth out of the land of egypt everyone here in any form of egypt you are coming out listen before the next seven days you will have a testimony to tell from this prayer i brought you out of the land of egypt that you should not be the abundant and i have broken the bands of your yoke and made you to go upright they wanted your life crooked but i am making you to go upright lift your hands and your voice and say father, father I, ask I ask that you break, that you break every, yoke every yoke that has bent my life, bent my life that has hindered my life and my progress father, father you brought me brought out me. of egypt, out of egypt. I, ask I ask that you break, that you break every, yoke every yoke of limitation, of limitation on my life, on my life today, today in the name of jesus, name of jesus. Oh, you yoke oh you yoke of limitation, of limitation on my life on my, life, on my, destiny. On my destiny pray, pray. Scatter now. Open your mouth and pray.